powerful collaborations, cutting-edge science, and curious minds coming together for a glimpse of the future. Stay tuned as we look at the latest updates on some of the most promising technology projects. Hello and welcome. I'm Peter Ballant from Technicon, and today we look at the Serena Project. This is a European project which has an important role in leveraging sensing and telecommunication networks of tomorrow. We all know that 5G is coming and has even arrived in some areas, but what most people do not know is that for us to take advantage of these super-fast data transfer speeds, new infrastructures must be developed. This includes new antennas, and this is where the Serena project comes in. Partners are looking at using gallium nitride alongside silicone to enable beam steering antennas. Their goal is to develop an architecture which is small, cost-efficient with robust thermal management schemes. And to tell us a little bit more about Serena, we say hello to Uwe Maas. He joins us from Fraunhofer in Berlin. Fraunhofer is one of nine project partners across Europe. Welcome, and thanks for agreeing to talk with us today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to present a little bit about the Serena project. I guess for, for us as a research organization, it's also interesting to try to explain what we're doing to the outside world. And I think podcasts are quite suitable. You have a bit more time to, to discuss options. And I think it's a good option. Thanks. Well, Uva, you just hit the nail right on the head when you said we like to explain what we're doing to the outside world. Many times in these EU technology projects, this is this is a little bit difficult. And since our listeners basically run the gamut of you know, everyday citizens all the way to perhaps scientific people, uh, how would you describe Serena? From our point of view, we would say Serena is one of the projects for a realization of uh, what is now known as the 5G mobile networks. So uh, I guess most of the people know that we have wireless networks with different technologies. So many will recognize 3G networks, 4G or LTE networks. So some of the vocabulary that was mentioned describing the technology that is used and it basically incorporated that you had, um, I would call it maybe better uh, transmission with, with mobile phones, especially uh, faster transmission. It allowed for, for data transmission along with actually uh, telephone calls. And now this 5G network introduces even uh, better performance for this data transmission. And yeah, the goal is to increase uh, the, the bandwidth so that people on the street or people using 5G networks will experience higher data rates, less waiting time, less latency for connections so that they more or less experience like uh, maybe an internet connection they would have if they're sitting uh, at their computer at home. So this would be higher communication bandwidth, I think, lower latency, as mentioned. In addition, the idea is not only to have like mobile phone communication between actual people, but also to, to open the network to uh, wireless uh, sensors, for example, wireless machines that generate data, ge measure environmental data like temperatures, like any parameters that can occur in a, in a manufacturing environment, for example, in some kind of uh, machine there, and provide this data to some kind of control um, computer so that it can better be, uh, be controlled, the, the manufacturing processes, and uh, then be used to, to, to optimize, for example, energy consumption or, or material um, yeah, supply. Okay, so it's improving our network that we have come to rely on so much and um, sort of get it ready for whatever the next generation is, which it will be data intensive. We know this for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ned, you mentioned, and I also saw this on the website for Serena, active millimeter wave arrays. Um, first of all, is, is 5G millimeter wave technology? So that's a good question. Millimeter wave technology actually means that we use a certain frequency spectrum 
uh, for the transmission of uh, the the information we have that is higher than what is uh, currently being used. Uh, and that's one of the technologies that's actually been applied to to improve the the, uh, the the mobile networks. 5G is not only millimeter wave technology, but it also incorporates further research and development and signal processing and also a bit uh, the structure of wireless communication infrastructure in the, in the cities, I guess, how this will be set up. All of this uh, will then be used to increase the performance of the 5G networks. Uwe, we talked about the improvements to the network speeds that we're trying to accomplish with Serena. What would be a use case or what is the product that we need to supply this network for? Can you imagine a particular item that we will need that has such a intensive uh, data speed requirement? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess uh, most people who use uh, mobile phones uh, at some point have wished for, for higher data speeds or more reliable uh, internet connections while they were out on the streets and trying to assess like uh, some kind of video stream, for example, from, from something or trying to find uh, some, some information somewhere in a city where they were not necessarily uh, familiar with the city. Uh, that, especially for high data rate intensive applications, so for example, video streaming, I could imagine would be one of the applications. But also if you think about uh, new um, yeah, forms or new technologies for actually visualizing data or interacting with, uh, with um, electronics like virtual reality, for example, so if you think about uh, games, for example, but also in the workplace environment, uh, if you have large data sets of, uh, I don't know, energy transmission from uh, renewable energies to different people requiring energy and how to actually display this kind of large data sets, I think this could uh, benefit also from virtual reality. Also, there's the idea of augmented reality. For example, if you think about, you go to like a museum or uh, in uh, doing some kind of uh, visit of a town, and then you have like a virtual reality glasses, and then you're looking at a certain picture, for example, or you're looking at a certain building and the technology can then be used to identify the building and just transmit information uh, in parallel while looking at it so that you get more information also from the building. So I think there are many applications both in the, in the, for private uh, usage, but also for industrial usage. And I could envisage that uh, in, in the future that will also lead to changes on how we use, um, for example, our computers be more efficient. So is this a market-driven project or is it a technology-driven project? So I guess it's a bit of both. In the past, I guess you often had the case that there were new technology developments which lead to new possible applications. And then there was somebody else who, who picked up this, uh, this development and then used it for, for some, I don't know, high data transmission. But I think in the meantime, we have come to expect so high internet quality that I could imagine that there is actually a need for, for high data rate connection, mobile wireless connection. And also, uh, I, I think that especially in the industrial environment, so workplace environment, that incorporating more information from the manufacturing processes to these wireless sensors gives new opportunities for, for uh, manufacturing. Which makes Serena a really important project because you're sort of uh, paving the way for what happens in the future, which is uh, an important task, of course. And as I read a little bit about Serena, I see that a, par a key part of the project is incorporating gallium nitride or GAN, which is a semiconductor material. And this is a, a material that you're using or you're researching in Serena. Is this in an effort to replace silicone or are you looking to build some sort of hybrid model using the tried and true silicone and gallium nitride? 
Actually, it's, uh, it's the second part. As you mentioned, there are different uh, semiconductor technologies available. So gallium nitride, silicon, I don't know, lots of other special application uh, technologies uh, for different applications. And each of them has their own advantage. For example, if you look at the silicon technology, which is mostly being used today for, for high volume applications like pre-C processors, also the most of the processors in, in uh, smartphones and also the, the memory is uh, being used uh, or is being manufactured in, in uh, silicon technology. So this has the advantage. They can manufacture very uh, small structures and uh, they go for very um, high quantities, so very high numbers of devices uh, they build from one a manufacturing run. So this is uh, then a very efficient way of manufacturing. So you get basically per manufacturing run a lot of devices and this uh, reduces the cost. On the other hand, research that has been done in um, silicon technology has led uh, to the fact that you can also apply it now for some of the RF applications so that you can basically combine uh, digital um, um, signal analysis, digital processing, like it's being done on a computer, for example, with some kind of the data or signal generation you need for, for wireless and data transmission. But what uh, silicon is not so good in, at least currently at the moment, is producing high output power. So basically, if you want to transmit a signal from, say, from a mobile wireless base station to a consumer who is having a, a mobile phone, you need a certain amount of uh, electrical power, of RF power, to achieve a certain uh, range, transmission range. And uh, there, this uh, output power cannot uh, be produced so efficiently in silicon technology. This can much better be done uh, using gallium nitride technology. So what the approach of the Serena uh, project is then that we try to combine the um, yeah, the, the best parts uh, that are available for the different technology blocks that are required within the, this uh, module, the silicon for the digital uh, part and also for some of the RF signal generation, and then the gallium nitride for, for generating the high output power and combining this into one module uh, using this packaging technology that we uh, develop here at Fraunhofer AZM to have a model, uh, to have a module which uh, can then uh, be used for this uh, millimeter wave technology. Okay, and does gallium nitride kind of look like the best candidate for, for doing this job? I think gallium nitride is actually quite uh, usable in this case. Uh, it uh, provides a high output power, much higher than what can be achieved with the uh, silicon. So I think in, in this uh, respect, it's uh, yeah, the best candidate, I would say. And one of the key applications of the technology that you uh, develop with Serena is for millimeter wave radio base stations. Can you describe these stations and, and tell us how they'll be used? If you think about such a wireless or mobile uh, system, the way it works that you have basically the space station, which provides the data or the calls uh, and uh, transmit them wirelessly to to the end user, so to the um, people on the street who have the mobile phones or to, to any device that has a wireless connection. So the base station basically takes uh, the, the data that is coming from the wired internet, so you have some internet server somewhere, or you have a, a caller that has a landline, and then he wants to connect to to somebody with a uh, with a mobile phone, and then the signal is being transformed uh, into a wireless signal inside the base station. Um, it's been amplified, and then the base station has to decide in which direction it has to send the the signal. So where. In con uh, so in relation to the base station is the end user uh, located. And then it actually sends the, the data, the, the information wirelessly to the, uh, to the user. 
Is this what we call uh, beam steering? Exactly. So one of the technology that can be used here is a beam steering. Uh, especially if you go for high frequencies, you have uh, quite high losses of this power that we talked about between the actual beam steering and the end user. And in order to overcome this, you can try to concentrate the output power in a certain direction, so in a certain beam, so that you do not send over in a wide area, but just direct the, the, the power to to the end user that is actually requiring uh, the information. And therefore, you can better overcome the, the, the high losses at the high frequencies. Ah, okay. So it's a way of really just aiming this signal right at the, or as much as possible to the yes, end user. Yes, I think that that would be the role of the of the Fraunhofer and the project, yeah. Um, you're from uh, Fraunhofer in Germany, and they are project partners in Serena. Um, tell me, what is the role of Fraunhofer in this project? So Fraunhofer is a research organization, and it's actually doing applied research in many different areas. And they have lots of uh, institutes, which where each institute basically has its own yeah, research uh, field, research area, we'll call it. So for the IZM, where we are working, so Carbon and I, um, and also the colleagues that are doing the technology. Um, we are focusing on uh, electronic system design and electronic packaging. So that is basically technologies to build electronic modules and the assessment of these technologies uh, and, and developing of the uh, production processes, as well as uh, the electrical and thermal design. So if you consider that's a very compact model, um, we know if, if we have some electrical device, oftentimes they get uh, warm or hot during the operation. You have to take care that uh, the, thermal, the heat that is being generated has to be um, taken care of. And also, if you think about RF uh, design, that's often a bit difficult because generating RF power is only possible with a certain efficiency. And oftentimes, you generate uh, some losses and therefore, you have to take care that uh, the hour of power you generate does not get lost in, in the transmission inside the module. So that's uh, where you take, have to take into account in the design of the module. Fraunhofer is uh, one of nine partners, actually, from five different countries. So at some point in the project, you have to come together as a team. And with our current COVID situation, this is probably a lot more difficult to do. But... This kind of uh, research project that involves a lot of different people in remote locations could sometimes have challenges. Can you cite any particular challenges within Serena? Uh, you mentioned, uh, of course, like an organizational challenge. We were a bit surprised, of course, like everybody else uh, with this uh, occurrence of this COVID-19 situation. I think uh, as it was like um, a project with partners distributed all over Europe, we, uh, in the beginning, before the COVID, uh, the project already started some time before, we already relied on uh, telephone conferences and video conferences. And this, uh, of course, uh, was uh, used more during the situation. So from a technological point of view, the difficulties were actually in, in the question how to realize such a module. So it was uh, development of the actual technology that was used. We had to apply new materials, materials that are suitable for the RF uh, integration of all of these functionalities. And then uh, we had to make sure that the RF design uh, of the actual package, so of the antennas that are being used, but also of the signal transmission lines inside the packages uh, meet the specifications that are there for the, uh, for the signal transmission inside the package but also uh, the power supply. So what is sometimes also being called as power integrity. So if you supply some kind of um, yeah, voltage, some kind of power, output power, it has to make, make sure that all of the components inside the packet actually have the power in, in a certain quality as it is required uh, from the, de the devices. All of this together, all with the manufacturing, actually is makes it a quite challenging project for, for, for Fraunhofer, but also a quite interesting project. 
is are, are you actually building something? Is there a demonstrator that you can actually show at the end of the project? Yeah, so it, exactly. So it was agreed uh, that uh, all of the research outcomes that are being meant, uh, done by the partners will be yeah, assessed more or less or um, validated using a demonstrator so that all of the individual developments go inside this demonstrator and as the demonstrator, it was uh, it was used is that we built such a base station uh, system for wireless data transmission, and then try to have a high speed uh, data transmission using our our system. Then. Okay, and is this system already um, built, or is this yet to come? Because I think the project ends what at the end of this year. Yeah, it was uh, extended. Um, so actually, we are in the phase of uh, building the modules. Uh, all of designs are ongoing, so we're more or less in the hot phase of the project, and we expect uh, the results by the end of the year. Well, and this must be really fulfilling uh, when you finally could build something to prove your theories. Actually, that's uh, that's true. So most of the of the work is uh, nowadays being done uh, on a computer. Uh, so in terms of the design and the, the analysis of the devices, of the module you have, and once you can really build uh, these things and you have them uh, directly before you. So oftentimes it's uh, surprising how small the uh, devices actually are, because if you're working on it on a computer, you always have it, have it on the size of the computer screen, of course. And then you get reminded, okay, it's actually a small device. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, it's nice to see then the measurement results and to see if it is working, if there is maybe a problem that you did not think of before and where you have a real learning effect then in, in, the, in the analysis of the data. That's, that's actually quite an interesting part. Yeah, and, and actually this is the value, I suppose, of actually building something at the end is that you can um, test what's been theoretical up to that point. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that's actually basically, um, so mostly in engineering, it's very important to, to have measurements as the systems become more and more complex. And it's sometimes difficult to predict everything and then simulation. So it's always good to have a real uh, working uh, demonstrator or system where you can do tests and then, then study the actual performance of the devices. This is an exciting project with a really big impact for our community at large. Um, for the person on the streets, this means they will be able to continue to work wirelessly in a much quicker fashion and perhaps be exposed to a lot of new different technologies. Like we said, virtual reality, augmented reality. It's a cool project. It's required a lot of work up to this point and it will be done soon. But for all of your work that you've done so far, I say thank you. And especially thank you for taking the time to share with us what you've done and some of the uh, challenges and some of the results up to this point. So thanks for sharing with us today. Yeah, thank you, uh, Peter, for taking uh, the time. Thank you. For more information about Serena, visit serena-h2020.eu. This podcast has been brought to you by Technicon. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program under Grant Agreement Number 779305.